woke supremacy from news. Donald Trump and the potential backlash from Republicans who support the former president. If they try to prosecute President Trump for mishandling class out classified information after Hillary Clinton set up a server in her basement, they literally will be riots in the street. I worry about our country. I mean, am I not supposed to comment on the fact that he was split screen with Trey Gotti, who was the person in charge of the Benghazi committee? I'm not supposed to point that out, but I just pointed it out. So moving on, Senator Graham later said that he wanted to clarify that he wasn't advocating violence, but warning that violence could happen. But some critics like Washington Post columnist Greg Sar Sargent said Graham's comment was, quote, a blatant threat of political violence, and he might have a point there. Notice that in Graham's comments I just played you, there was actually no condemnation of political violence at all included there. The other part of Graham's comments there were to talk about Hillary Clinton, who I should also remind you, was not prosecuted. And so therefore, he's saying that the FBI can't prosecute Donald Trump. But as Sargent also writes, Clinton was not charged because an intensive FBI probe, which we all remember, found no evidence of crimes. And the reason I know that is because a man who is very tall, named James Comey, he used to run the FBI. He came outside. He did a whole televised press conference and said that no previous cases would support criminal charges against Clinton and that, quote, no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. Like James Comey came outside and told us why Hillary Clinton wasn't charged. Stop acting like you don't know why. Glenn Kirshner, a former federal prosecutor and MSNBC legal analyst, joins us now. So, Glenn, I'd like to start with getting your reaction to Graham's warning about riots in the streets and to his, you know, false uh, e equivalence there, comparing what happened with Hillary Clinton. Tell us why he's wrong. Yeah, he is wrong because uh, James Comey, I think, imprudently announced that even though Hillary Clinton was extremely reckless, which I think many people heard as, well, then I better not vote for her for president, there was inadequate evidence to prosecute or no reasonable prosecutor would bring a charge against Hillary Clinton. You know, he, he should have abided by the rule that you don't badmouth the candidate on the eve of the election virtually on the eve of the election. But we, what we heard Lindsey Graham say, Zerlina, is that if Donald Trump is prosecuted, if he's indicted, if he's held accountable for his egregious crimes, there will be riots. The minute I heard that, you know what I was reminded of? Donald Trump saying, come to D.C. on January 6th, it will be wild. This was not a warning from Donald Trump, nor did it sound like a warning from Lindsey Graham. You know what it sounded like? It sounded like a recruitment call. If Donald Trump mm. is prosecuted for his crimes, it's time to riot. That's the message that Lindsey Graham delivered, whether intentionally or unintentionally. I heard he's tried to walk it back. I'm glad. But it feels to me like the message was sent. Yeah, normally when you don't want violence um, to even be inferred from your statements, you add in clarification, like... I, I'm not condoning violence. I don't want to condone violence. I'm not violent. People add that into even their normal conversations. Um, and it, it's, it's interesting that he did not, he chose not to do that there in that clip that we just showed. You also tweeted the case of Asia Janae Lavarello, Department of Defense employee. And I want to talk about this comparison here because it's very, very interesting. Now tell us about her, what she was jailed for doing. <laughs> And, and compare that to what we're talking about when we look at the facts related to what Donald Trump is alleged to have done here. Yeah, Zerlina, Ms. Lavarello was a Department of Defense executive assistant working down in Hawaii, 31-year-old African-American woman. And DOJ issued a press release sort of outing its success earlier this year in prosecuting Ms. Lavarello. And I've got the press release in front of me here. And some of what the Department of Justice told us is that she pleaded guilty to uh, essentially mishandling some national defense information. There was no assertion in the press release that there was any damage mm -hmm. to our national security. But when you kind of go through the press release, what you learn about what Ms. Lavarello did 
was that she took some classified documents to her hotel room. One of the documents was classified as secret, which is several steps below many of the documents that Donald Trump was concealing unlawfully at Mar-a-Lago and refusing to return to the government. So she took a secret document to her hotel room and she attended a meeting, which she was authorized to attend, where she took some notes and some of what was discussed in the meeting was classified. And here is her other transgression, her other crime. She did not send the classified notebook via a secure diplomatic pouch. I'm sorry, but that doesn't sound anything like what Donald Trump did. Now, I'm not suggesting Ms. Lavarello, if she broke the law, and it appears she did, shouldn't have been held accountable for her crimes. But what we know, at least based on DOJ's press release, is nobody negotiated with her for a year or a year and a half trying to get back a secret document. And what we also know is she was promptly put in prison for three months while Donald Trump, you know, is still out golfing. So this feels to me like a deep injustice to say it's a double standard is simply stating the obvious. Um, and, you know, it's something that can only be remedied if Donald Trump is held accountable for his crimes. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking a lot about my conversation with David Rode in in the previous segment about, um, you know, you don't want to rush the prosecution. But I think the consequences of not prosecuting Donald Trump for all of the things that we know at this point now, prosecutors, that's their decision. But it feels like the amount of black and brown people that have been incarcerated for literally nothing. Kali Browder did not steal the backpack and he is dead. He was put into solitary confinement without a conviction, and now he is dead. I think about him when I think about all of the hand wringing about whether to prosecute Donald Trump, given all that we know to date, and also the fact that people are dead related to his conduct. Now, prosecutors will determine what happens next. And Glenn and Kirchner, thank like you so much for being here. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Jump in. Go ahead. Nobody can accuse the Department of Justice uh, of rushing to prosecute Donald Trump because you were just talking about Michael Cohen. He was in a conspiracy with Michael Cohen years mm. ago. He committed and he participated in inciting an insurrection on our government and he hasn't been held accountable. And now he's not being held accountable for mishandling classified materials. Nobody can accuse DOJ of rushing to judgment. That's a really, really, really good point. Um, and again, uh, shout out to Michael Cohen who Again, 51 days in solitary confinement for a conspiracy in which he was doing something on behalf of Donald Trump. Okay, we're going to leave it there for real. Thank you, Glenn, again for being here. Glenn Kirshner, always great to have you.